The idea of separating team agility from organization agility or even enterprise business agility is becoming more and more popular in our sector. According to one site, organization agility is a far broader discussion that focuses on making the whole organization adaptable and agile, as opposed to just introducing new procedures inside teams. Examining business agility models leads to the same conclusion. Within the context of these models, agile is limited to individual teams and is insufficient. So, in this video, we are going to talk about team agility versus organizational agility in detail. Before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. We will start our session with a brief introduction to what is team agility and principles of team agility. Next, we will understand the theory and values of team agility. Moving on, we will talk about what is organizational agility and the benefits of organizational agility. Finally, we will conclude the session by talking about how to make organizations more agile. I hope the agenda was clear. Before we start with our session, if you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about Agile Project Management, DevOps and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Agile Project Management Certification Training on Certified Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Master, and Agile Scrum Master Certification. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Let us start our session by understanding, what is team agility? Let us first understand, Agile Team. Agile teams are cross-functional teams with a focus on organizational change adjustment. Agile teams use new resources and prevent new threats. They establish strategies that allow them to swiftly turn and adapt to the inevitable changes that will occur in their environment. Team agility is founded on lean thinking and agile methodologies. On the basis of lean thinking, it may be regarded as an integration of Scrum, Kanban, and extreme programming. It is based on important concepts and understands that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Team agility is defined by evaluating what must be completed at the team level and using Scrum and Kanban methodologies as necessary. This allows for a specific set of practices that are suited to the teams employing it. The purpose of team agility is to help the company in achieving business agility, which is the fast, sustained, and high-quality realization of business value. This demands both cross-team communication and teamwork inside the organizational framework. Let us understand this better with an example. Using a fixed set of roles, events, artifacts, and rules is comparable to using a GPS without a map. If you get lost, are unable to make a turn, or miss it, you are lost. A map displaying alternate routes to the destination gives not only real alternatives, but also a method to get back on track if you get lost. In the complicated world of software development, it is increasingly likely that you will need this ability. Individuals frequently require a predetermined path but indicate your current location and give a reset option in case you get lost. This is what the Lean-based Agile team performs. Scrum does not even attempt since you are no longer in Scrum. Scrum supporters just refer to this as Scrum but and move on to the next team. This does not exclude the usage of Scrum, rather, it indicates that Scrum should be used within the framework of Lean. Now, for Agile teams to be successful, a framework must satisfy the following requirements. It should. Provide an excellent beginning point for the participating team. Avoid overwhelming them with excessive change. People like a well-defined beginning point, so be specific. Clarify the team's goals so that they may easily adjust their practices as necessary. Prepare learners for the next level of study. Next, let us understand the principles of team agility. Although team agility describes how teams may do their job most effectively in an agile organization, the focus is not only on the team. Agile should not focus on developer iterations, but rather on speeding the delivery of business value with predictability, sustainability, and quality. Team agility must be taught within this framework since the team is just one element of the required people, process, and artifacts. Team agility is created with the following guiding ideas in mind. Acknowledgement that the team's efforts contribute to a greater whole. Next, teams are part of a complex system. Therefore we must analyze how they interact with the rest of the organization rather than focusing just on maximizing the team's work. Then, train the team on their component of the agile product management process, which includes identifying and refining the soon-to-be-built components. Next, recognize that we must choose practices that are suitable for the team, rather than relying on a predefined set of standards that attempts to function everywhere. Now, let us understand the elements constituting team agility. The basic parts of team agility are principles, roles, process, and artifacts. 
Principles are belief systems and attitudes that offer direction for doing tasks. These concepts must be reflected in our roles, process, and artifacts. Individuals' responsibilities within a team are described by their roles. Workflow comprises both events and the execution of tasks. Artifacts are information maintained as separate documents or in tools that apply to the job being performed as part of the process. While details are required for individuals to adopt team agility, the goals for each practice are provided so that individuals may progress from any starting position. In addition to the goals, each practice, procedure, and artifact will be given as a maturity spectrum. This will illustrate the many alternatives available to teams and discuss the aims of each. Here are fundamental team agility concepts. Adopt a comprehensive systematic approach. Every work must be visible. Respect both the people and the workplace culture. Assure that feedback loops are as minimal as possible. Focus solely on tasks that provide the most value to the organization. How team agility is meant to be implemented. One often hears that the purpose of establishing a framework is to make things easy. This has eased numerous processes. The objective is sufficiency. This is what I like to call elegance, just enough to get the job done but not so much as to impede comprehension. Suggesting that something is basic suggests that it is complete and straightforward. However, it is more likely to be simple and incomplete. We want unfinished in an informed manner. Incompleteness is essential when initiating a new method of operation. Attempting to learn everything at once is too much for many. The difficulty is that we cannot remain unfinished. As individuals gain knowledge, they must progress to the next level. Therefore, we must begin with an inadequate knowledge and strategy, but one that is customized to the population at hand. We must be cautious on incompleteness since the starting point must do the following. Offer a solid beginning point for the participating team. A one-size-fits approach will miss much of the time. Avoid overwhelming people. Be specific because people's understanding is poor. Make the goals of the team very clear. Prepare learners for the next level of study. The majority of agile team frameworks and practices only satisfy the second and third requirements. The anti-patterns for these missing needs are. The approach is either inappropriate or misses readily available options. When obstacles to their method arise, the team will be at a loss for action. When feasible, the team will not advance to the following stage. In the absence of numbers 4 and 5, teams often leave critical practices without adopting new practices that would be more suitable, thus losing the potential to accomplish the main purpose the practice was created to achieve. While we do not want to be complicated, the opposite of complexity is not the goal. It is understanding. Next, let us talk about the theory and values of team agility. First, talking about the theory of team agility, Systems thinking is the view that a system is an interconnected and interdependent collection of pieces that is bounded in more than the sum of its parts, subsystems. Changing one component of a system has predictable effects on other components and the system as a whole. Positive development and adaptation of a system rely on how effectively the system is adapted to its environment, and systems often exist to fulfill a shared goal or a work function that also contributes to the maintenance of the system, otherwise, the activities may result in system failure. The objective of systems thinking is the systematic realization of a system's dynamics, constraints, and conditions, as well as the elaboration of principles as purpose, measure, methods, tools, and so on, that can be discerned and applied to systems at every level of nesting, and in every field, in order to achieve an optimal end state by a variety of means. The core of team agility is lean thinking, which emphasizes the significance of leadership, commitment to schedule, and dedication to quality. Continuous development is predicated on enhancing the current system and fostering an atmosphere where teams may self-organize while attending to the requirements of the whole. See systems thinking philosophy as it applies to frameworks, methods, and approaches for further information. While the Scrum Guide states that Scrum's roles, events, objects, and rules are immutable, team agility is not immutable. As an operational model, it is designed to be used to identify the most suitable roles, events, artifacts, and rules for a team's circumstances. Our objective is to develop organizational agility. We should not strive for team-level local optimization. Considering the complete system, or at least the element over which we have control, increases our efficiency. Why do we do this? We want self-organization within the framework of the development team's value stream. So the options are self-organized within the development group's current environment. This needs management and the team coach to collaborate. Next, talking about team agility values. Team agility commits to the scrum ideals of commitment, courage, focus, and openness. T 
Team agility is meant to assist these qualities when the system's personnel make it difficult for them to manifest. Now, there are some anti-patterns of not adopting this strategy or unwanted behavior patterns, that come from ignoring the strategy described previously. Teams concentrate on optimizing their work while losing sight of the actual goals. Next, this optimization of the teams is at the price of the achievement of total value. Then, teams finish stories and features, but cannot offer value due to the frequent absence of essential components produced by other teams. Next, if we can't apply a practice precisely as described, teams usually stop performing it and don't pursue other practices that might achieve the same goals with less work. A typical anti-pattern occurs when teams choose Scrum or Kanban without determining which is more relevant. In actuality, one should not choose between the two, but rather take what works from both. However, one important step is to determine whether Scrum is suitable for your team. Next, moving on, let us understand what is organizational agility? The organizational agility skill outlines how lean-thinking individuals and agile teams improve their business processes, update strategy with clear and decisive new commitments, and rapidly adapt the company to seize new possibilities. It is one of the seven key capabilities of the lean enterprise, each of which is important for achieving business agility. Each core skill is backed by a distinct evaluation, allowing the business to evaluate its performance. There are different forms of organizational agility. Here are a few. Operational agility, this kind of agility refers to an organization's capacity to swiftly adapt to new possibilities that have the potential to enhance operational efficiency. Portfolio agility, this kind of agility refers to an organization's capacity to swiftly move business resources for the benefit of the enterprise as a whole. Strategic agility, finally, this kind of agility relates to an organization's capacity to swiftly adapt to new innovations and acquire competitive advantages. A really agile organization will have mastered operational, portfolio, and strategic kinds of agility in order to succeed in all contexts. Next, let us understand why organizational agility? In today's digital economy, the only truly lasting competitive edge is the speed with which a business can detect and react to client demands. Its strength is its capacity to create value in the lowest sustainable wait period, to rapidly change and execute new strategies, and to reorganize to better handle emerging possibilities. Organizational agility is essential to effectively solve problems. Unfortunately, the majority of businesses' organization structure, procedures, and cultures were formed more than a century ago. They were designed for stability and control, not creativity, speed, or agility. Small changes to how an organization manages, plan, and execute are insufficient to keep their competitiveness. This requires a leaner and more agile strategy, which in turn necessitates enterprise-wide improvements with good, long-lasting effects. The safe approach to addressing the challenge of digital transformation is the dual operating system, which leverages the stability and resources of the existing organizational hierarchy while implementing a value stream network that leverages the entrepreneurial drive that is still present in every organization. SAFE restores the second operating system by structuring and redesigning the organization around the flow of value instead of the old organizational silos. It enables businesses to concentrate on both the creation and development of new ideas and the execution, delivery, operation, and support of current solutions. The organizational agility competence is essential for supporting the possibilities and risks of the digital age with the strength of the second operating system. This skill is shown across three dimensions. First, lean-thinking individuals and agile teams. Everyone engaged in the delivery of the solution is trained in lean and agile methodologies and accepts its values, principles, and practices. Second, lean business operations. Teams use lean concepts to comprehend, map, and continually improve the processes that supply and support business solutions. Third, strategy agility. The organization is sufficiently agile to continually detect the market and modify its strategy as needed. Next, let us understand the benefits of organizational agility. First, accept change. Things in the corporate world are continually evolving, and often in complicated ways. What is effective now may not work tomorrow. Companies that can foresee upcoming changes, pivot quickly, and capitalize on new trends, technologies, and so on, are often the most successful. The only way to pivot fast is to prioritize organizational agility so that your organization is prepared to make a change when the time comes. Second, increased revenue growth. Typically, agile organizations generate more income. It makes sense, if an organization can capitalize on new trends and ideas before its competitors, it will be able to produce new goods and services more quickly and gain new consumers with less effort. 
In addition, organizational agility requires that all employees have specific roles and responsibilities. When your staff has a clear understanding of their tasks, they will be able to do them more quickly, resulting in fewer lost hours and a better bottom line. Third, more engaged workers. Lastly, organizational agility often results in more engaged workers. Why? Because modern employees want to be a part of dynamic, innovation-driven organizations. Typically, agile organizations fit under this category. Employee engagement is key due to the high cost of employee turnover. The typical employee will change jobs 12 times throughout his or her career. Each time this occurs, it will cost the organization 1.5 to 2 times their annual income. By promoting organizational agility, you may increase employee engagement and decrease employee turnover. Next, let us understand how to make organizations more agile. First, adopt the right mindset. True organizational agility begins with the appropriate mindset. While maintaining stability, you must favor agility. In referring to McKinsey, dynamic practices help businesses to adjust nimbly and swiftly to new problems and opportunities, while stable practices promote dependability and efficiency by creating a foundation of features that do not need frequent change. You can strike the right balance between dynamic and stable practices by identifying the organization's backbone, that is, the things that remain constant such as business structures and processes, and combining them with agile principles such as a flexible resource allocation strategy, cross-functional collaboration, and employee autonomy. Second, employ the correct people. Human resources has a significant influence in the organization's agility. The individuals your organization chooses will either make increasing agility simple or practically difficult. Therefore, it is essential to employ organizational flexibility as a goal. Instead than recruiting just for certain skill sets, such as content marketing experience, look for people with above-average creativity, curiosity, and collaboration skills. Additionally, it will be advantageous to hire employees with an entrepreneurial spirit, as they will be more capable of working independently and producing. This recruiting strategy will guarantee that your team has the necessary knowledge to perform its tasks, while also preserving organizational agility by retaining workers with creative mindsets. This balance in your organization's workforce is essential. Third, develop a vision with goals. A unified, enterprise-wide goal toward which all workers may work using established, achievable techniques will also contribute to organizational agility. In reality, this is one of the most important principles lacking in slow, plotting organizations that are stable but totally incapable of adapting swiftly to changing situations. A unified business vision also enhances employee engagement, which increases individual work satisfaction, team productivity, and decreases staff turnover. A clear vision that is broken down into a series of objectives will allow you to better prioritize your team's efforts and complete the tasks with the largest organizational effect. By enhancing efficiency, you will also increase the agility of your business. Fourth, remove organizational silos. The majority of businesses are organized in ways that restrict interdepartmental cooperation. Marketing, sales, and product divisions, for instance, concentrate on their separate jobs and only collaborate when necessary. The issue is that silos restrict adaptability. When all teams are comfortable collaborating, it is considerably simpler to respond to industry changes. Teams can make choices fast since all management experts are on the same page and working towards the same shared objectives, as stated by the corporate vision. Unfortunately, eliminating silos may be challenging, particularly for companies that have used siloed organizational structures for the majority of their existence. However, it's not impossible. Each of the suggestions we've previously discussed and the one we'll discuss in the following step will assist break down departmental silos. So, adopt the proper attitude. Hire the right individuals. Develop a vision with objectives. Iterate and enhance. Here's another tip, utilize the proper tools. Even if your coworkers operate in separate areas, there are an abundance of technological tools that will ease communication and collaboration. Fifth, iterate and improve. Lastly, to enhance organizational agility, you must evaluate your work in this area and make the necessary adjustments. For instance, you may discover that not all team members understand your company's goal, resulting in employee conflicts of interest. This issue may be resolved by simply redefining your goal in a more thorough manner. The constant pursuit of iteration and improvement is what makes a business agile, after all. Your company will remain a slow-moving machine if it loses the capacity to adapt fast while retaining stability. I would like to conclude the session by saying that. 
It is pretty normal for delivery teams to attain agile maturity over time and reach a point where they are disciplined and experienced enough to provide things in an agile manner. To become agile as an organization, a much larger number of individuals must buy in and be involved in the entire efficiency of going from ideas to value delivery. When entrusting autonomous teams, there will certainly be challenges like fear of change, enhanced cooperation and empowerment, and the acceptance of some unpredictability. Once you are able to begin enhancing these factors via effective coaching and servant leadership, you may be well on your way to attaining organization-wide agility. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Comment your thoughts in the section below. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell, never to miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, to learn more about Agile Project Management, check out Invensys Learning's Agile Project Management Certification Training on Certified Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Product Owner, Professional Scrum Master, and Agile Scrum Master Certification. You can also check our other courses, such as Certified Scrum Master, Professional Scrum Master, Safe Scrum Master, and Agile Scrum Foundation. We at Invensys Learning provide interactive instructor-led certification training by trainers with rich domain experience and expertise. We also provide mock tests to make you confident while appearing for the certification exams, access to mock tests and case studies prepared by industry experts, and personalized LMS with lifetime access that contains course resources. Thank you. Have a nice day.